As a project manager, you must keep an eye on how your project is going. For this reason, you can compare the actual progress of your project with the estimated project timeline and plot them in the same chart to visualize the status of your project. In this regard, you may consider creating a burn down chart. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Demi, your day to day Excel and VBA tutorial helpline. This is Hadiul Basher and today I will demonstrate how to create a burn down chart in Excel. For this video, I will use Microsoft Excel 365. Let's quickly refresh our idea about the burn down chart. A burn down chart plots the amount of work remaining versus the amount of time. Time usually runs along the horizontal axis. On the other hand, the amount of unfinished work that is also known as backlog is usually represented on the y axis. This is a sample burn down chart. In this tutorial, I will show you the detailed process of creating this burn down chart from scratch. Let's talk about our data set. We are planning to launch a new product to the market and as you know, launching a new product involves a huge amount of workload. So to manage the work efficiently, we have divided the workload among the departments. You will find the name of the departments in column B and you can see there are four departments involved in this project and in column C you will find the estimated hours that is the workload measured in hours unit. From this list according to the estimation you can see the manufacturing department needs to perform a workload equivalent to 100 work hours to complete their assigned task. We intend to complete the whole project within five weeks so all the departments are supposed to complete their work hours within these five weeks we have recorded the actual work hour of each department week by week in column d you will find the actual work done by all the departments in the first week and in column e you will find the actual amount of work done in the week 2. Similarly, the amount of work done in the 3rd, 4th and 5th week are measured in work hours unit and recorded here. Now, I will calculate the summation of the amount of work done by an individual department across the 5 weeks and compare that value with the targeted work hours that is the estimated work hours. And I will calculate the difference between these two values in the hours left column. Now to calculate the work hours yet to be completed by the designing department, go to cell I5, type equal, select the estimated work hours for this department, that is cell C5, press the minus sign. Now I will use the sum function to calculate the total work done by this department in these 5 weeks. So type the sum function. The sum function returns the summation of your selected range of cells. As the number 1 argument of the sum function, select the actual work hours of the designing department that is cell D5 to H5. Then close the parenthesis of the sum function and hit enter. This returns 22 which means 22 hours of equivalent work are yet to be completed by the designing department. Now to calculate the hours left amount for all the departments, let me use the autofill feature. So select the cell I5, go to the bottom right corner of the cell I5, then double click as this plus icon that is the fill handle appears. As a result, the work hours left for all the departments are calculated here. From this data, we can say that we couldn't meet the deadline. Now, to get a clear picture about the work hours and the time, we can create a burn down chart. One thing I should mention here that Excel doesn't offer a template of this chart, so we need to create the chart on our own. For that reason, first of all, we need to prepare a data set and in this segment of this data set, I have already created the structure of the data set. In this data set, I have set the category and the categories are scheduled hours, completed hours, work hours left and the total burn down. Then I will calculate the total work hours left and the total burn down amount at the starting of this project and from column D to H there will be week wise data. Now I will calculate the total work hours left at the beginning of the project. So go to cell C13 type equal sum, press tab to auto complete the sum function 
as the number one argument of the sum function, I will select the cells C5 to C8. That includes all the estimated hours as at the beginning of the project, the total workers left will be the summation of all the estimated hours. Now press F4 to lock the cell reference. Now close the parenthesis of the sum function and hit enter. This returns 350, that is the total workers left at the beginning of the project. This means the total workers of all the departments should be equal to 350 to accomplish the project. Now, at the starting of the project, the total workers left is same as the total burn down amount. So, I will go to cell C13 and press Ctrl plus C to copy the value of cell C13. Then, go to cell C14 and press Ctrl plus V to paste the value and these are the values of workers left and total burn down amount at the starting of the project. Now the total burn down amount will be divided into 5 equal parts that will be the scheduled hours of the 5 weeks. So to calculate the scheduled hours for week 1 go to cell D11 type equal select the total burn down amount that is cell C14 press F4 to lock the cell reference and divide this value by 5. I have divided this value by 5 because the total workload of the entire project will be equally divided across the 5 weeks. Now hit enter to get the scheduled hours of week 1 and it returns 70. This means to complete the project within the scheduled project time, the summation of the workers of all the departments in the first week should be at least 70. Now let me use the autofill feature to fill the scheduled hours for the rest of the weeks. As the workload is equally divided across the 5 weeks, so the scheduled hours for all the weeks are same and it is 70 hours. Next, I will calculate the actually completed hours in the first week. So go to cell D12, type equal, type sum as the number 1 argument of the sum function. Select the cells D5 to D8 that are the work hours of all the departments in the first week. Now close the parenthesis of the sum function and hit enter. You can see the formula has returned 55. This means the summation of the total work hours that is the actual work hour of all the departments in the first week is 55. Now I will calculate the work hours left at the end of week 1. So in cell D13 type equal select the workers left amount at the starting of the project that is cell C13 and subtract the actually completed work hours in the first week from the workers left amount at the starting of the project. So press the minus sign and select the cell D12. Now hit enter and this returns 295 that means 295 hours of work should be done within the remaining 4 weeks. Finally, I will calculate the total burn down amount at the end of the first week. So in cell D14, type equal and select the cell C14 that contains the total burn down amount. Press minus and select the cell D11. That is the scheduled hours of week 1. Now hit enter and this returns 280. And from this value, we can see as the actual workers left amount is greater than the estimated workers left amount at the end of the first week. So we couldn't complete the minimum amount of estimated work hours in week one. Now to calculate these values for all the weeks, let me use the autofill feature. For that reason, select the cells D12 to D14 and drag the fill handle all the way to cell H14. And this completes our data preparation. Here you can see that as this project is supposed to be 5 weeks long. So at the end of the 5th week the total burn down amount is 0. However the actual workers left is 58. That means there are 58 hours of work to be completed to accomplish the project. So we couldn't meet the deadline. Now we can create the burn down chart. For that reason, select the cells B10 to H14. Then move to the insert tab. From the chart section, click on insert line or area chart. Here you will find different options of line and area chart. In my case, from the 2D line chart, I'll choose the line chart. This is the basic view of the chart. Let me resize this chart to get a better view. Now you can customize this chart. For example, 
I will insert the access title. So click on this plus icon, which is the chart elements. And from the chart elements, you will find the available options. In this case, I will check the axis titles in this chart. The x axis represents the time and the y axis represents the amount of work. So as the axis title of the vertical axis, I will set work hours. And in the horizontal axis, I will set the axis title as time. Here in this chart, total burn down is represented by this yellow line and the workers left amount is represented by the ash color line. And at the beginning of the project, the total workers left and the total burn down amount is equal and the value is 350. And from the chart, you can see that the value matches with the data set. Since the workers left line is showing up over the total burn down line, it means the team is behind the deadline. You can see the burn down line which indicates the estimated amount of remaining work has intercepted the x axis as the end of the fifth week. This means all the work will be completed at the end of the fifth week to accomplish the project. On the other hand, the workers left line which is the actual amount of remaining work is not equal to zero at the end of the estimated project deadline. So there is still work yet to be done in order to accomplish the project and the entire time of the project will be longer than the originally planned five week project period. Again, the scheduled hours and the completed hours are indicated by the blue color line and the orange color line respectively. This is a quite good representation of the scheduled hours and the completed hours. However, to make the presentation better, you can use a combo chart. For that reason, right click on this plot area and choose the option change chart type. This opens the change chart type window. From the all charts section, you will find the combo chart at the bottom of the list. Combo chart is a chart that contains multiple types of charts in a single chart. You can see a clustered column line chart is recommended for my chart. Here the scheduled hours is represented by the clustered column chart. Also the completed hours is represented by the clustered column chart. On the other hand the workers left is the line chart and if I scroll down a little bit I can see the total burn down chart is also a line type chart. This selection is perfect for my case. However, if you want to change the chart type, then you need to click on this drop down icon and here you will find the available chart options. You can choose any chart according to your choice. In my case, the current selection is OK. Now you can see a preview of the clustered column line chart here. The preview looks good. So to create the chart, I will click on OK. As a result, the clustered column line chart is created. Here, the blue columns are indicating the scheduled hours. On the other hand, the orange columns are indicating the completed hours. As the scheduled hours are same across the five weeks, so the height of the column of each week is same. On the other hand, the completed hours varies from week to week and this is also reflected in the chart area. From this chart, you can see that the completed hours is greater than the scheduled hours only in one case and this is in the fifth week. In all other cases, the completed hours are less than the scheduled hours. Hence, you can get valuable insights from this burn down chart. Now, I'll set the chart title as burn down chart. And this completes our chart. I have demonstrated the step by step guide for creating a burn down chart in Excel. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge according to your requirements and convenience. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions or feedback in the comment section below. You can go to exceldemy.com to read our Excel blogs or you can share your Excel related issues in our Exceldemy forum and receive free solutions. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye.